Hello team, welcome to the first module for MINS, Mathematics in Nature and Society. We're in the society purport, we're in the society portion of that nature and society thing, and we're talking about elections here, obviously very important. Um, and so we're going to start off right here by breaking down the basic components of an election, but I'm going to try to do this using an example and then generalizing that example afterwards. And so by elections, I want to first mean that this is any time that we're having a collective body of people make a decision based on the collective uh, perspective of each of those people. So a bunch of people offer um, their preferences and a decision is tabulated based on that. And so we'll put our example zone over here This is our example zone. So we can get into some more important consequential examples later, but for now we're doing uh, the family reunion pie vote example. Yes, you did hear me correctly. So let's say that you're at this family reunion and your family is just totally bizarre such that they need the entire family to vote on which pie they want for dessert before they decide which pie to make. So our choices, so we're choosing between choosing between apple, blueberry, cherry, and peach pies. So we need to choose one of these um, and so and we're going to do this with some sort of ele election. We don't know what. So going over to the basic elements right basic elements of an election the first element is the set of candidates. And so these are the people or things that you can choose between. So whether it's decisions or people or pies, this is just one of these candidates is going to win the election. Um, and so these are the things that you're choosing between. I assume that you're somewhat familiar with this. Um, so we'll move quickly kind of through these. Now we have the, next we have the voters. And so in this, these are the people who have a say in the outcome of the election. And so in this case, it's the family members because all the family members are going to vote on which pie this is and which pie they're going to have. We also have the ballots. And this is where it becomes a little bit more tricky because there are multiple types of ballots that we can use. And by multiple types, I don't just mean like paper, electronic, phone, whatever. Um, I'm talking about specifically like the layout of the ballot um, because that is important. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just rewrite this um, in a form that makes it a little bit easier. So let's say we have these four spaces and so this is Apple, blueberry, cherry, and peach. Okay, and so we can have multiple different types of ballots. The first one would just be a single choice ballot. So this is if you only choose your favorite and nothing else matters. So if I like apple pie the best, I would just you know, give it a check, mark that space somehow, and give no other information. And that would be a single choice ballot. Uh, there's also, there are also preference ballots. And that is where you 
rank each choice, each of the candidates, according to your preference. So I might do something like one, two, three, four, indicating how I would rank each of these. And then there's also truncated preference. This is common with ballots that have, or with elections that have many, many candidates, but you still want some, you still want people to provide a second, third choice. And this clearly would just be uh, if this is just you rank your top n choices. So in this case, if we had a truncated preference ballot for this pi example, and the we were truncating it to just two choices, a first and second option, then I would just not put these there, and it would be one, two, and that's it. Um, and then if you wanted three choices, um, if you wanted me to rank the top three, then I would do one, two, three, so on. So that's that's pretty clear. Um, and then the outcome, another important piece. This is just the results of the election. In this case, we make a pie, and it's a certain type of pie, whatever pie we chose. And so that's that's fine. And then the other piece, which is Similarly, uh, a bit more complicated, like the balance example, is uh, the voting method. Clearly, this is important because I wrote the. Don't know why I put a the there and not in any of the others. Clearly, because it's the the most. Anyway, so I'm going to make some extra space, so I'm just gonna move voting method to the top here and talk about the different types of voting methods because there are a few of them that we'll cover. Let's see, we'll cover, yeah, we'll cover four different types of voting methods, so. Voting method. And so to help make this clear, I'm going to give us the results. I'm going to give us the results of the collection of ballots and then explain how those results would be actually tabulated based on each type of voting method. So let's say we have this table we have um, in the each column is a different order that people chose. So let's say in this case that everybody, that we did a preference ballot for this. So we've got number of voters, and this will make sense once you see the entire table. Put number voters, and then this is And first place, second place, third place, fourth place. Again, this might not make total sense until the whole table is drawn out, but just bear with me a little bit and we'll get there together. Okay, so we have six voters that chose that order apple, cherry, peach, blueberry. So that's six people who gave that exact order um, in their preference ballot. And then we had five people who had blueberry, peach, apple, cherry, and four who had cherry, apple, blueberry, peach, and then three who had cherry, um, peach, blueberry, apple, and then lastly two who had, who wrote peach, blueberry, cherry, apple. 
So this is our collection of ballots here. We had this, the top shows the number of people, and the order that corresponds to that number of people. Okay, awesome. Now we've got all this. Now let's talk about the different voting methods that we can use, the different methods we can use to produce a single result from this ballot. So the first one, the first example is the plurality method, or the first voting method is the plurality. So this is simply, we take um, the, this is simply the candidate with the highest number of first place votes wins. So in this case, so I'll, I'll write that down here. Um, candidate with most first place votes wins. So in this case, all we need to do is say, hmm, okay, um, we have that Apple got six, uh, six first place vote votes and the rest of them, um, we, so we, okay, yeah, so here we go. We have Apple got six first place votes, um, so that's cool. Uh, we see that Blueberry got five, um, but then in these two sets of orders, uh, Cherry was the first in both of them, so we actually have that Cherry got four plus three first place votes. So we have that Cherry got seven first place votes. So if we're tabulating this right, we've got um, flavor and num the number of first place votes. Number of firsts we have apple got six, blueberry got five, and then cherry got seven and Peach just got two. Two people wanted Peach the most. So we ended up with Cherry having seven first place votes. That's more than anyone else. So in this case, Cherry would win using the plurality method. Awesome. Okay, so that's cool, right? But what about a different type of method? Let's say we do a method called the board account method. Now this, um, this is a system that involves assigning points to each, um, assigning points to each candidate based on their rank in each ballot. So for example, uh, if we take this order here, let's say that we take one of the ballots that says apple, cherry, peach, blueberry, um, then because there are four candidates, we would give apple, which was the first, we would give apple four points, and we would give cherry three points, and we would get give peach two points, and blueberry one point. And then we would do that for every single ballot, and what we would end up with is, what we would end up with is a total number of points for each uh, candidate, and then from there, the candidate with the highest number of points would win. So for this, we would add up a, we would add up the points associated with each so we'll say that in each case, um, we would have that the first place will get four points, and the second place will get three points, two, one, so on. Okay, so we're going to use the border method here to tabulate these 
ballots and give us a decision. So first, we're going to figure out the number of points that Apple should have um, according to uh, this method. And so first, we'll start off in the this first column here because this has six this is there are six of these votes and they each put Apple in first place the first place um, the first place vote or the, the first place position gives awards Apple four points so we'll do six times four and then plus we'll move to the next column and we'll have that Apple is in third place and there are five of them so we'll do five times two and then plus four Apple is in second place here so we'll do four times three and then Apple is in last place for this this column here so we'll do and there are three of them so we'll do three times one and then same here but there are two so we'll do two times one and so I'm just gonna make sure that I do the addition correctly here um, and so 6 times 4 is the same as 12 times 2 which is 24 I'm just going to clear this out 24 plus 10 plus and then 4 times 3 is 12 so plus 12 and then plus and we get 51 Okay, so next we'll do um, next we'll do uh, blueberry. So let's take a look. So we get uh, four times one first, and then we'll do five times four plus four times two. plus three times two. Oh, and this was supposed to be the plus up here. I'm sorry, that was wrong. Plus two times three. And so this will give us, clear this out again, four times, hold on one second, I'm just gonna silence everything here. Um, so let's do 4 plus, now 5 times 4 is 20, plus 8, plus 6, and then plus 6 again. And we get 44. Now we'll continue doing this for cherry and peach, but I'm not going to put you through all that. Um, I recommend you do the rest of this yourself. Um, so if you'd like to do that, just pause the video now and compute these two and then figure out the winner for yourself. And then I'll be back in a few seconds to tell you what I got for my answer. So I finished my board accounting and I have found that I got the cherry. Oh, and I should mention that I made a mistake earlier that changed. Um, I had a four here. Um, in this first term of my computation of B of the blueberry points, um, this should have been a six. Um, so I got that cherry was our winner with 55 points, and then apple in second place with 51, followed by peach with 48, and then blueberry with 46. Um, so you can see if you got a similar thing or definitely uh, speak to me in class if you've got something different and you think that you're right because it's very likely that I make made a mistake in all these numbers but of course the idea here is just that you um, are multiplying the number of ballots times the number of points that the candidate got in each ballot so um, that's how you do it and notice that um, although both the plurality method and the board account method got that cherry was our winner, um, the order after that um, for points actually is a little bit different. Remember that Peach was in last place in the plurality method and now 
it's actually in second to last. And that means that although fewer people gave it as their first preference, um, there were more people who gave it as a second or third as opposed to last. Um, and so that changed its order with Blueberry, which was interesting. So that can be different. Okay, and so the next the next method that we're going to look at is pairwise comparison. And what this means is that we take each possible pair of candidates and we, I lost my eraser, where the heck did I put it? Oh, it's right here, haha. <laughs> uh, we take each possible pair of candidates and figure out who wins, and but who wins between that pair, and then we give the winner one point and the loser of that pair zero points. And then if we were to give and then if we get a tie between two of them, then we give each of them a half point, which won't happen in this example. Um, so to do this, let's write out our um, let's write out our candidates. So we have apple, blueberry, cherry, and peach. And so boop, no, no, no. Um, and so our first, um, for our first possible comparison, let's look at apple versus blueberry, and so AVB. Um, and let's look at which one has more uh, first place points. And we have here that apple has more first place points than blueberry, so we'll give apple a point. And this will be easiest to do with tally marks as opposed to um, Arabic numerals that we're used to, uh, just because we're going to be adding one by one here. Um, but if we had ties, we wouldn't want to do it this way. So, or we could, we could, we could do half tallies if you suppose, if you wanted to. Um, next, let's look at A, V, C, and now in this case, um, Cherry will win because Cherry has seven first place votes and Apple has six. So we'll give Cherry a point. Now let's look at A, V, P. Um, so that's Apple versus um, Peach. And here Apple wins, so we're going to give Apple a point. Um, next we'll do Blueberry versus Cherry. And so Blueberry has five, Cherry has seven. So now Cherry gets a point. We'll do Blueberry versus uh, peach, and now um, blueberry has five, peach has two, so we'll give blueberry a point, and lastly we'll do C, cherry versus peach, and cherry will win here because it has seven and peach only has two. And now I believe we have covered all of the possible pairs because Yep, I um, believe we've covered all the possible pairs here. So we'll uh, carry on and we'll say that here uh, with pairwise comparison, we have that cherry has three points, followed by apple with two and blueberry with one. So cherry wins again here, but different method sometimes can produce different results. Okay, so the last voting method that we're going to study here is the method of plurality with elimination. Uh, this is also sometimes known as instant runoff voting, and a lot of states implement it in their um, state elections. And so it's another interesting method. Plurality with elimination. So. What's going to happen here is we're first going to list the number of first place votes that each candidate has, like we've done a couple times already. 
So let's do apple, blueberry, cherry, and peach. And of course, apple has six, blueberry has five, cherry has seven, and peach has two. And now what the elimination means is that we're going to take the last place, in this case Peach, and vote it off the island. It is the weakest link. Goodbye. No more. And we're going to give those two votes that Peach got um, to the candidate um, to the candidate that got second on each of those ballots. So in this case, there were only two ballots that had Peach as their first place and they both had Blueberry as the second place. So those two points are both gonna go to Blueberry. So now five plus two, we now have that Blueberry has seven points. Interesting. So now we've got, now we do the same thing again. We eliminate our last place. Our last place is now Apple with six points and so Apple gets voted off the island, and we need to reassign those votes. So, in this case, there were a total of six votes that had Apple first, and so now we're going to give all six of those votes to Cherry, because all six of the ballots that had Apple first um, have Cherry second. So, those uh, six votes all go to Cherry, so you get seven plus six is 13. Cherry now has 13 points, Blueberry has 7, and we eliminate Blueberry and give the winning prize to Cherry. And by winning prize, I mean we make a cherry pie and we eat it.